so welcome to lecture number three in this series on DC machines in the previous lecture we derived the formula for induced voltage for a simple rotating loop uh, E induced is equal to 2 VBL uh, we can also write this as V is equal to R omega we know this formula linear velocity can be represented equal to r omega r is the radius and omega is the angular velocity uh, as well as we know b is equal to uh, we can represent this in terms of flux uh, and area where b will be given by flux divided by area uh, area will be 2 pi r l so substituting the values of v equal to r omega and b equal to phi by 2 pi r l in this equation we'll get e induced equal to 2 by pi phi omega fine so this is the induced voltage that will be actually uh, available to us at the ends of the uh, rotating loop we can see from here we can note two things from this one e induced is proportional to phi and e induced is proportional to omega so greater the flux uh, or the field more will be the voltage induced in the rotating loop as well as uh, greater the speed of rotation more will be the induced voltage so for a dc if we are talking about a dc generator if the magnitude of field is increased as well as the rotation is increased the induced voltage in the generator will increase so this is about actually a simple rotating loop uh, we have deduced the induced voltage for a simple uh, rotating loop now we will derive in a similar fashion torque induced for a simple rotating loop so now if we take a simple rotating loop uh, wherein we feed this rotating loop through uh, volt DC voltage We are feeding a DC. We are feeding this uh, rotating loop. We are feeding a simple loop now uh, uh, using a DC voltage. It's not rotating on its own, and this loop is placed in the magnetic field. So, as we understand, once we apply the DC voltage, current will be established in this loop. A current carrying conductor when placed in the magnetic field will experience a torque and therefore start rotating. Uh, so the approach uh, so will be basically determining the torque that will be induced in all the four segments as like we did in case of uh, induced voltage we derive the uh, voltage in the segment AB then the voltage in the segment BC then the voltage in segment CD and in the voltage segment DA segment DA uh, in a similar fashion we'll see the torque induced in these four segments uh, we understand force that is applied on a conductor when uh, the force that's applied on a conductor when placed in the magnetic field and a carrying current is given by F is called I L cross B and the torque on is given by R F sine theta fine so looking at this equation the theta is actually the angle between r and f the torque will be essentially zero uh, whenever the loop is actually beyond the pole edges. fine uh, let's see the torque derive will derive the torque in different line segments so torque is given by uh, the rf sine theta now for the line segment 
for the segment uh, AB. Now, uh, in the segment AB, you see the current is flowing in this direction. Fine. So it's actually out of the page. Uh, the bat the battery is actually arranged this is plus on this end and minus on this end so current is flowing in the segment a b in this way so actually the current is flowing from b to a the magnetic field actually uh, is pointing radially uh, out of the rotor so the force that will be applied will be given by i l cross b will be equal to i l b so this force will be actually tangential to the direction of motion uh, your current is out of the loop the line segment is uh, your current is out of the page your force is acting your magnetic field is acting from north to south and accordingly you can find the direction of force uh, so force is given by uh, ILB tangential to the direction of motion now with R since tau is equal to RF sine theta it will imply that torque will be equal to R into ILB sine of 90 degrees uh, where 90 degrees is the angle between the radius uh, radius and the force that is applied onto the loop so this is equal to R I L B. So this is the torque that is induced in the line in the segment A B. In the segment B C, half of the loop is actually under the influence of south pole, half of the loop is actually under the influence of north pole. So you can see that actually on half of the pole the torque will actually uh, act clockwise and the half of for the rest of the half the torque will actually try to rotate the loop counterclockwise so the net force will actually make sure that the there is no induced torque on the line segment bc fine the current if you see the current that's actually flowing from c to b in this case that's actually from left to right of the page so the force induced in that sense will also be equal to zero f of b is i l cross b since uh, current and l cross b will have an angle of uh, 90 degrees so i dot product here will be I mean, cos of 90 that will become zero where uh, l is actually parallel to b for this segment BC L and B are in the same direction for segment AB this was your length L along this direction and B was in this direction so it had an angle of 90 degrees for the segment BC L is in this direction B is also in this direction so they have an angle of 0 so the cross product will be 0 segment CD again uh, for the segment CD we'll get ILB and torque will be equal to R I L B fine uh, the direction of rotation this will again be tangential to the direction of motion uh, for the line segment CD for the segment DA again for the segment da l and b they are parallel so the cross product will be zero so total force for the line segment da will be zero so net induced torque 
will be equal to tau AB plus tau BC plus tau CA <coughs> plus tau DA. Fine. Tau AB is given by RILB. Tau BC is 0. Tau CA is RILB again. And tau DA is 0. So this is twice RILB. Fine. Uh, so this is uh, the total induced torque applied uh, on a rotating on a simple rotating loop uh, again using the formulas for uh, where b is equal to phi by 2 pi rl we can say this equation becomes torque induced is equal to R, uh, 2 by pi uh, phi i fine so from this equation you can see that torque induced is proportional to phi and torque induced is proportional to i so so or a simple rotating loop that actually acts as a DC motor, a linear DC machine, DC motor, uh, the net induced torque will be proportional to the magnitude of uh, magnetic field or the flux that's actually applied. And it will also be proportional to the current that is flowing through the conductor. In a, so just like induced voltage that's proportional to flux and speed, uh, induced torque is proportional to flux and current. Thus, the torque produced in the machine is actually the product of flux and the current in the machine. I just want a numerical on this. Uh, Let's take uh, an example of the same system. Fine. Uh, so for this machine that's actually shown in the figure, uh, R is equal to 0 0.5 meter the radius is 0 0.5 meter capital R that's the resistance is 0 0.3 ohms L is equal to 1 meter uh, B is equal to 0 0.25 Tesla and VB is equal to 120 volts where VB is actually the voltage that's applied across the uh, DC winding across the terminals of the loop so let's see what happens uh, in this circuit uh, so let's uh, deduce the following things for this uh, what happens when the switch is closed two uh, let's uh, find out the maximum st starting current what is the maximum starting current see what is the steady state
question what is the steady state angular velocity at no load so look at this uh, circuit when the switch is closed uh, what will be uh, initially the machine is not rotating there is no current flowing in this machine so induced voltage in the uh, loop is zero as well as torque induced in this loop is zero uh, so as soon as the switch is closed uh, since the induced voltage is zero we can say i will be equal to v b minus e induced divided by r fine the current that will flow the current that will flow in the circuit will be given by the potential difference uh, vb minus the volt the voltage that's actually induced in this loop that's e induced divided by r since since e induced is equal to 0 therefore i is equal to vb divided by r as soon as this current is established in the uh, loop in the loop uh, what happens because of the current in the loop and uh, as well as the magnetic field the torque will be induced in the circuit and this torque will be equal to 2 by pi phi i that we have already uh, derived just so this induced torque will actually result will actually cause the loop to accelerate uh, in a counterclockwise direction but as soon as the rotor will start rotating uh, now you actually have a rotor that you actually have a rotating loop present in the uh, in <clears throat> fine initially there is no induced torque in the uh, loop there is no induced voltage in the loop as soon as we turn on the switch current is established in the loop a current carrying conductor in the presence of a magnetic field when experience a torque and therefore will start rotating so therefore this loop will now start rotating now uh, what happens after this is a rotating loop is now present in the uh, in the presence of a magnetic field so the magnet so that will actually cause induction of in induct that will actually cause voltage to be induced in the loop so now after torque is induced voltage will now be induced in this loop and E induced will be equal to 2 by pi phi of omega. So now since E induced is equal to 2 by pi phi of omega, this quantity I no longer is now equal to Vb divided by R. This is now equal to Vb minus E induced divided by R. So therefore, I will fall. So as soon as I decreases, as i decreases torque induced will decrease torque induced decrease uh, means uh, again the machine will actually uh, that will actually cause omega to decrease so this omega decrease will cause e induced to decrease so this is actually uh, the principle of back emf that is, will be understanding in case of a motor uh, so this uh, back emf that we have actually discussed here causes this machine to actually uh, come to a steady state where torque induced will finally be equal to zero so this continuous loop will take place omega will decrease causing the i back to increase torque induced will again increase so ultimately at a balanced condition induced torque will finally be equal to zero
and at this condition uh, E induced will be equal to BB. Fine. So this continuous loop will take place until finally the machine achieves steady state where VB the voltage that we had actually applied to the rotating loop will be equal to the voltage that's actually induced now because of the presence of the magnetic field and a rotating loop. At that condition torque induced will be zero and VB will be equal to E induced. I will also finally be equal to zero. Right? So maintaining this condition is actually not uh, practically possible but this is what will happen theoretically. Uh, so this is A part. So that's A part. It's a theoretical concept. Uh, what happens is in any in a DC machine, uh, assume initially the switch is closed, and the loop is not rotating, uh, there is no current in the loop, uh, there is only there is a loop present in a magnetic field. As soon as uh, we establish a current in this loop, uh, torque will be induced in this loop and it will start rotating. Now this is the phenomenon of motor but now you can see that there is a rotating loop present in the magnetic field. So the so the magnetic field will actually cause induction of voltage. Uh, so this rotating loop now in the presence of a magnetic field induce, voltage will be induced by the magnetic field in this loop. That induced EMF will actually be in phase apportioned to the actual voltage that actually caused the current to flow initially. Uh, so there will be uh, uh, back and forth phenomenon where it will try to decrease the current and finally uh, the machine will achieve steady state and at steady state the induced torque will be zero, VB will be equal to induced EMF. So that will be the steady state condition that will be established in this motor. Uh, B part was what is really the maximum starting current of this machine. Uh, we have derived that I will be equal to VB divided by R at initially when induced EMF is 0. VB we know uh, is being given to us is 120 divided by 0 0.3 that is 400 amperes. So this is uh, B part and C was what will be the steady state angular velocity at no load. Uh, so what happens at no load, uh, the induced torque uh, at no load basically and with steady state condition achieved, the induced torque has to be equal to zero that we have uh, just established. So if the induced torque is zero, I will also be equal to zero. So VB is actually equal to induced EMF uh, and we know the formula for induced EMF is uh, 2 by pi phi omega. So 2 by pi phi omega is equal to uh, induced EMF that is equal to VB which is equal to 120. So this implies 120 is equal to 2 divided by pi into uh, phi that has been given to us. Uh, we have been given B 0 0.25 phi is equal to b into a uh, 2 by pi phi into 0 0.25 into a a is uh, 2 pi r l this is into 2 Induced EMF is equal to 120 is equal to 2 by pi. Phi is B into A is 2 pi R L into omega. So this is a formula from which we will be getting omega equal to 120 divided by 
0.2 into 0.5 into 1 into 0.25 these values have been given to us so this is equal to 420 radians per second uh, <coughs> fine so here we have actually introduced the concept of back emf once the motor starts rotating once the motor action actually takes uh, once the motor action actually kicks in where the rotor starts rotating now you have a rot rotating circuit in presence of a magnetic field so torque voltage will be induced in it that will actually call we be in a phase apportion to the actual voltage that initially caused the current to flow through the circuit so that will try to oppose it as and this will continue till a steady state is achieved where in torque induced will be zero and current will be zero so that's for this lecture uh, in the next lecture we'll start with uh, the construction of a DC machine